and thank you for joining me today on Loyal World Info. Another day of the global spinning, another day of global news to digest. I offer a sane, rational voice for an insane, rational time. I will be your host, but first, let me share a little bit about me. I look forward to waking up to the international news like a child opening a Christmas present. I never know how I will act or activities I will do until after I unwrap my present. In the news case, what will I learn? What will it cause me to think about? What will I reflect back on? And what will I share with others? Stay with me and let's open presents together. Now, let's get into today's topics. And welcome to Loyal World Info. The topics of the day as of 422 2020. Before I get into the topics, let me remind you that all of these will be in one big format on my podcast on Loyal World Info. Uh, all the timestamps are included in the description of these videos, and I will break these videos up per subcategory instead of one huge long one on YouTube. But I will give all the topics for now. So we have international topics. Recovered patients catch COVID again. Tracking wristbands go global. China seeks medicine from dolphins. Court proceedings go to live stream. Facebook agrees to censor and foreign workers to receive lifeline. Okay. Our first article of the day comes from the Star newspaper in the newspaper and it discussed how South Korea finds patients testing positive post-recovery from the virus are barely infectious. Now, remember how people are saying, all right, I got the disease, I recovered, but then they catch it again, even though the symptoms are not as bad. But this might make it hard for people to go to work often if it's something you can catch more than once. So let's read it. Okay. Patients who tested positive for the novel virus after recovering from their first bout of the illness appeared to be far less infectious the second time around, the South Korean health authorities said on Wednesday. While the trend in new cases in the country remained downward, the Korean Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had been investigating a growing number of people testing positive after recovering. More than 180 such cases have been reported so far in South Korea, but none were found to have infected anyone else. That's a positive sign. The medical authorities in South Korea initially conduct polymazar chain reaction, PCR, tests on suspected cases. But investigating people who appear to suffer a relapse after the virus um, 19, the C KCDC takes cultures of, virus, of the virus to, process, to a process that takes more than two weeks before reliable results became evident. So far, culture tests are underway for 39 cases, but all six completed so far have been negative. That means the virus in a relapse case has little to no infectious uh, infection. So that basically means if your dad recovered, from the virus and he catches it again, he will show less symptoms and he has a much higher chance of not passing it along to you even when you two interact. 
Zhao Long dismissed the idea of a replacing PCR test with culture tests to determine whether a patient has fully recovered due to the amount of time and resources that they require. The KCDC said it is still examining why some patients test positive after, again, after recovering. Among the main possibilities are reinfections, a relapse in consistent tests, experts say, and Zhang Hong has said, the virus may have been reactivated rather than the patients being reinfected. Okay, so it's probably like cancer, right? You know how you can have cancer, your cancer can be gone through radiation, and maybe you were stage four and it's gone. Then it's gone for five years, and then it comes back as strong or stronger than it was. But in this case, it's weaker. The KCDC reported on Wednesday new coronavirus cases taking a total infection to 10,694. The daily tally of the cases has been hovering around 10 for the past five days. The death toll stands at 238. After grappling with the first major outbreak outside of China, South Korea has largely managed to bring the outbreak under control without major disruptions, thanks to a massive testing campaign and intensive contract tracking. Yes, remember South Korea uses the wristbands um, to track people. Now, my question for you, how do you feel about people that are able to recatch this illness? And how do you feel about being around people that you may or may not know who have this virus, even though they've already received treatment? Please leave your comments below about the article and the findings and how you feel about catching this again or catching it from somebody. Okay. Moving on to our second article of the day. India plans wristband patient surveillance as lockdown eases. Now, this takes place in New Delhi. India said on Wednesday that it plans to manufacture thousands of wristbands that will monitor the location and temperature of virus patients and help perform contact tra tracing. The wristband project aimed to track quarantine patients and aid healthcare workers and those delivering essential services. India is ramping up surveillance as it begins to ease one of the world's strictest virus lockdowns. I am going to post a link above about how Korea used wristbands to track patients. So you should take a look at that. It has over 20,000 confirmed virus infections, including more than 650 deaths, and experts fear the epidemic peak could still be weeks away. Thousands of wristbands are expected to be developed and deployed, but an exact figure has not been released. The wristbands mirror a similar program in Hong Kong, where authorities use bands to monitor overseas travelers ordered to self-isolate. Wow, I didn't even know Hong Kong was doing that, but that's kind of freaky that you could be outside of your country and your government still has a track on you. If they're using it for this disease, imagine what else they can use it for. Broadcast engineering construction consultants, India, a government-owned company, will present wristband designs to hospitals and state governments next week to work with Indian state startups to manufacture them. George Carvola, the company's chairman, said the wristbands are likely to be rolled out in May. Prime Minister Mo Modi has urged the country's 1.3 billion people to download the government contact tracing app called Agua Satu to help determine their infection risk. 
It has been downloaded over 50 million times since its launch on April 2nd. How do you feel about uh, wearing a wristband and being tracked? Well, even though it starts for this virus, will eventually be tracking you on everything you do. Maybe even, maybe even while you're getting intimate and it's tracking your heart rate. Corvola said that wristbands could in, integrate data captured in the app. He said the wristbands will be used to monitor the movements of the quarantine patients, both at home and at hospitals, and any spikes in their body temperature. They will send an armlet to the the public health officials if patients move outside their quarantine zones. The devices will also have an emergency button that wearers can use to call for help. The wristband will let health workers know if people they encounter have been to, to high-risk areas or have been in contact with an infected person. While aiding those delivering essential services such as groceries and medicines. It will capture all the places an infected persons have visited, probably through Bluetooth. The, the routers, they look determined if they had any foreign travel and identify those who were in the vicinity. It will also tell people if they are sick nearby. It will also help in creating a geofence or a virtual perimeter around areas being monitored such as common meeting places, public transit, or places for religious gatherings. A person entering or leaving the virtual perimeter could be altered through the wristband. Man, the government is really tracking. This was just yesterday that uh, people were tracking protesters on Facebook in America, so it's not good. The monitoring has raised privacy concerns. Dr. Ann Bond, a public health and bioethics expert, said it is important to factor in privacy protection and data protections for both apps and wristbands. Well, anything can be hacked. It also, it's also important to ensure that the wearer's possible consent is sought for the use of the location tracking and sharing, such as inter intervenous could be useful to the public health and surveillance purposes, but should not be used to stigmatize individuals or communities, he said. Yeah, so how, how, what do you think about this? Is this invading your privacy? Yes, no, and why? And would you feel comfortable wearing a wristband? Or how would you feel if you go to a party, let's say, and one of your friends has on this wristband, would you avoid them? Would you still contact with them like normal? Please uh, let me know how you would deal with that kind of a situation. And leave your comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Moving on. Now, this is in the Taiwan news. China list white dolphins as source of medicine? Hmm, you know, poor dolphins. I know a while ago that the Japanese were trying to do a homing signal a few years back. Was that dolphins would pick up and then it would kind of drive them to shore and then they would be killed for their blubber or whatever. But anyway, let's read about the dolphins in Taipei. China's handling of wildlife has again sparked controversy, what with the latest examples being a state-affiliated scientific organization listed the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin as a source of medicine. A Chinese news on on Monday shared a photo of a document on the science news platform originally from the National Na Nature Science Foundation, an organization under the Occupus of China State Council. The document details projects that it will channel funds into the 2020, including Chinese white dolphins as marine source 
that will be tapped into further China's med medicine research. According to the directive, the foundation will fund reproduction of the dolphin species for medical purposes. The mammals in inhabit the coastal waters of the Western Pacific and the Eastern Indian Oceans. The neutralization lashed out at what he called the absurd decision to target Chinese with the dolphins for research, saying it is a vulnerable species not viable for artificial breeding and will pose health risks to humans if consumed. The meat and organs of the animal could contain high levels of heavy metals and organic pollutants, he suggested. Yeah, the, the Chinese do like to like um, copy things. Like most of the pandas that they own in their parks were inverted fertilization because pandas in particular don't like to breed. So I can see this happening. Chinese media, the cover sought a comment from the National Natural Science Foundation only to receive a reply via telephone that the issue was noted and would be reported. The document had since been withdrawn. China has come under fire for its consumption of commercial use of wildlife, which is blamed for being a possible cause of the deadly Wuhan virus pandemic and the 2002-2003 SARS epidemic. The country announced a temporary ban on the trade of wild animals in January. The Frog Reproduction Council of the China Wildlife Compensation Association was ordered to cease operations in February after it posted a controversial article opposing authorities' decisions to pro prohibit wildlife trade. It, had, it claimed that hu humankind yearning for wildlife products has never been satisfied, and in some ways, it has become sort of a rigid demand. So what do you think? Do you think dolphins should be used for research, or how should any animal be used when we're talking about animal rights and animal research for medicine or other purposes? Uh, please leave your comments below on how we should handle, the, handle this research. Like, comment, or subscribe. Okay. Moving on to our next story, Malaysia court to live stream proceedings for the first time ever and open to the public. Okay, this is from Asia One newspaper. And let me read the story first, then I will tell you why I thought it was worthy to post. Coup Lapour, so this is Malaysia, for the first time in history, the Court of Appeals will be hearing civil cases via live streaming on Thursday. So civil cases means I have a problem with you. Not, it's not criminal cases. In a statement on Wednesday, April 22nd, the judicial said it would be conducting online proceedings for three selected cases due to the movement control order to curb the spread of the virus. To complete and support the online proceedings, the judiciary said it was taking a step further by launching the Pioneer live streaming project. This means that public would be able to view proceedings live akin to them being in an open court and ensure that Access to the judicial system is continuous, he said. The three cases that will be heard are Zhao Fang versus Scarlet, Prontu Gashu Sotaha, Sabin Jin Hafang versus Sakaha Pyeongtong Suta, and Hai Hati Sabin and Zaka Papa versus Saka. I'm sorry if I butchered those. The live streaming can be viewed from 10 a.m. on the Judiciary website. It is expected that a three-man bench will be pr pr pressing over the trio of cases. 
Since the start of the MCO on March 18th, the courts will only hear urgent and MCO related cases. Now, the reason I thought this was really interesting, you know, most people will get married or whatnot, and they'll go take like classes through their church or um, something like that. Or, but um, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice like if you had like a 10 to 40 hour requirement before you got married, like to listen to uh, the courthouse, like say family court. You watch two or three videos of the drama that XYZ couples are doing in court. And maybe that would just change people's mind or at least educate them what might be the possibility for them later. So if they do these things online, people can do this from home, get educated, and then make a healthy choice for themselves. What do you think? Would you like to see court cases online? Yes or no and why? Please leave your comments below. We are moving on to an American landmark. Yes, the landmark of Facebook. You know, yesterday I was like listening to um, Tim Pool. I honestly, sometimes I listen to him. And he threw up an article that Facebook was um, t blocking or taking down people who were trying to organize within their state or cities to reopen the government because they wanted to go back to work. So Facebook was helping the government enforce rules. So today I was surfing the internet and I came across this article. Facebook agrees to censor post after traffic slowed in Vietnam. Facebook local servers in Vietnam were taken offline earlier this year, slowing the local traffic to a crawl until it agreed to significantly increase the censorship of anti-state posts for local users to sources at a company told Reuters on Tuesday. The restrictions, which the sources said, were carried out by state-owned telecommunication companies knocked their servers offline around seven weeks, uh, meaning the websites became unusable at times. You know, no matter what app, app or company you like, you always have to remember a company is not your friend that maybe you might make you feel really happy and good, but they want you either for your data or they want you for your money. They have no loyalty to you. A good example of this would be Google. Google was kicked out of China um, so they went to Hong Kong, but then when China got Hong Kong, they they decided to help China make a big firewall 2.0 because they wanted China money. Facebook, similar, that we want your money, so we'll bend the rules to spread your your rules, regulations, and values. So let's read this article. We believe the action was taken to place significant pressure on the increase of, of our compliance with legal takedown orders. When it comes to the content uh, that our users in Vietnam see, the first of the two Facebook sor sources told Reuters. In the email statement, Facebook confirmed it had reluctantly compiled with the government's request, complied with the government's request to restrict access to content which it had deemed to be illegal. Vietnam's foreign ministry, which handles requests from the foreign journalist for comment from the government, did not respond to the Reuters request. States of the telecoms from Vintel and Vietnam Post and Telecommunications Group also did not respond to the request for comment. Facebook has, be, has faced pressure to take down anti-government content in many countries over the years. In Vietnam, despite sweeping economic reform and increasing openness to social change, but the country retains tight control of media. To that end, it keeps a close watch on Facebook with over 65 million users as the main platform for both both e-commerce and not. Okay, so then it gets a little into the history of Vietnam with media. But my question for you, 
Does, does, how would you feel if you cut all your social media off? Let's say Facebook, a neighbor, uh, I don't know, Zayla, whatever ones you have. Could you live without those for 30 days? Yes, no, why not? Have you tried that? How is your life different when, when you couldn't go click with your friends instantly because your social media was gone? I would like to know. Again, if you could live without a social media site and how you would communicate with your friends without a social media site. Please leave the comments below. Like, comment, or subscribe. Okay, moving on. This is my last article for international news for the day. And this is more of a public service announcement. As you know, sometimes I give those to help people around the world. The coronavirus confirmed where foreign workers will get paid, have medical needs and meals taken care of, says Shanghai. This is in the Singapore news. As you know, many people travel outside of their country to find work. So, because of the lockdown and because of the disease, some of them have fallen on hard times. So, let's read the article and help people out. Foreign workers who have been confined to their dormitory for the next two weeks can rest assured that their salaries will be paid and their food and medical needs will be attended to, said the Minister of Home Affairs and Law K. Speaking to reporters after a visit to West Light Papun Dormitory in the Georgian area, Mr. Champon said that to the purpose of his visit was to hear from the workers to understand their concerns and their give his assurance. He said, it's tough to be cut and be in a room, a room most of the time, but they understand. Their main request is they hope after this is all over, they will be allowed to work in Singapore. Singapore is their destination of choice, and I said we hope to do so too, that they can work here. Mr. Champerteau, who spoke on in Tamil and English to more than 70 workers, told them that the COVID outbreak was happening in all countries as well and sought their understanding for the current measures being implemented. He also answered, answered the, to the workers to report the authorities if their employers do not pay them. Also, the diagnostic, that will also the dialogue where he said, the Secretary for Financial Affairs and generally Secretary of the Singapore Port Workers Union and Bangladesh born guy founder of the chairman okay well, let's go on the, the the dormitory currently holds about 5700 workers and it has no confirmed uh, covid-19 cases as of tuesday the 28th out of the 43 purpose built dormitories have known clusters all right um, so it goes on it says Speaking to reporters, he said that other than the, their salaries, workers might be concerned about medical support and their living conditions. I said, look, if you're not well, please report sick. We are aggressively testing even those who are, who are amphistotic. But please report you, and you will be taken care of, he said. Given the example of the Singapore's 42nd COVID patient, a 39-year-old Bangladesh worker who was transferred out of the intensive care unit after being there for more than two months, he noted that the workers said they had no issues with their food when they asked and that Wi-Fi connectivity has been boosted so they can connect to their families regularly. Asked about the, the case of work pass holders 
who was stifened of his past for breaching circuit breaker measures earlier this month. Mr. Shunga said, I think the message ha has to go out very clearly that if you breach the rules, very severe actions will be taken. We want to stop the spread and everyone must observe the rules. Yes, he's talking about a different guy like a week or two ago. He was told don't report to work, but the guy went to the his factory or wherever and he went to work and then they locked him down because he had a virus. So they're keeping the law. So so how about you? Are are you getting paid? Are you for load? Are you getting paid for staying home, not working? Do you have um, a government plan to give you some money or something? On how how about your food? Do you have enough food supply? If you do, where are you getting it? Please leave your comments below. I'd like to know how your government or your book, your company is helping you get through this time. Hi, the small clip you saw was brought to you by Loyal World News. If you like what you saw, you should subscribe and tune and look up my daily Loyal Real News report for its full version. If you don't want to watch it on YouTube, prefer to be on the road, I also have a podcast in, in every full-length video I put up.